Today's video, I'll be discussing ideal diode circuit analysis. And I was lagging a concept of this, so I had to do a lot of research uh, to understand this. So I thought I'll share with you. So let's see the, uh, this circuit. Uh, it's very simple. And we can easily say that this diode will be forward bias because the positive voltage or the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the positive of the diode and the negative terminal of the diode is connected to the ground or negative terminal of the battery. So there is no doubt about uh, this diode. But what about this type of circuit? Now we can't be sure whether this diode is forward bias or negative bias, uh, reverse bias. Because here we have a positive 12 volt battery connected through the resistance. This is a positive 11 volt battery connected through the resistance. Now in such a scenario, uh, we have to uh, adopt a different approach that I'll discuss in this video. And similarly, a couple of examples. Now this is also here. You cannot say which diode is for bias or which is not. And similarly this one. And the reason I am making this video is because I had solved this question earlier and I had made a mistake which was pointed by a student from Japan and also a student from Bangladesh questioned my answer. So I had to do the research and find out. So I'll, in next uh, few videos, I'll be discussing each of these questions uh, separately, inshallah. Okay, couple of things that we have to remember. That is, assume an ideal diode is a reverse bias or assume it is a reverse bias. So we uh, either assume it to be forward or reversed and then proceed. Next point is that if this is the diode, there are two possibilities as we have discussed. Either it is forward bias or reverse bias. If it is reverse bias, then obviously it will be denoted by an open circuit. And when it is open circuit or we are making it open circuit, then the current through this will be zero. And this we are saying it is enforced condition. When it is open circuit, the current has to be zero. What about the voltage? We don't know. So we have to calculate this voltage across the diode. Similarly, if the diode is forward bias, then we represent it by a short circuit. And the voltage drop across the short circuit is zero. So there is no resistance. So this is the enforced condition that VD has to be zero. And we have to find the current through the diode. One point you might like to keep in mind that do not check the condition that you enforce. So like here we are enforcing that ID is equal to zero. So there is no need to verify uh, through circuit analysis or question solving that ID is equal to zero. And similarly, in this case, there is no need to verify this. Very important point. When we are considering that the diode is forward biased, like here, ID of the diode current has to be greater than zero or positive. And obviously VD is zero. In case of a reverse bias, the reverse bias voltage has to be less than zero or VD has to be negative. And the current is obviously zero as we have enforced. Then we'll be using a technique which is called proof by contradiction. Now, what does this mean? Let's say when we're calculating a forward bias and we get a current which is negative, then we will contradict it that no, this is not what we expect. In case of a forward bias, our current should be positive. So that is called the proof by contradiction. So we'll follow this technique. And finally, one point, although uh, uh, this may not be applicable in all the circuits, especially with the single diode, but keep in mind that for every circuit, 
one and only one assumption will be valid. So this is very important. And the moment, uh, let's say you have four options uh, of solving a circuit, and in the third option you get the circuit to be correct, then there is no need of going for the uh, fourth option. And I got uh, lots of help from Jim Stiles from University of Kansas and Department of EECS. So you can watch his uh, notes on the, uh, let's make a Google search, very helpful. Thanks, Jim. Okay, let's do the first question. Find the conduction state of the diode. So this is the circuit. We have a voltage source here, resistance, voltage source, resistance. You have to find whether the diode is forward bias or reverse bias. Okay. So the first thing we do is uh, we mark the current directions. I'm calling this as I1 and I2 from the positive terminal of the battery. Next, as we said that the diode could be either on or it could be off. So let's assume that it is on in the first case. Assumption one is that diode is on. So what will happen? We can redraw it. Diode is on. That means we replace it by short circuit. And as we have learned, there are two conditions associated with this. The first is that when it is short circuit, VD has to be zero. This is the enforced condition. What is the other one? Current. We have to find the current. Now this current direction I am showing from bottom to top because the diode is shown here and we know that the diode current flows from the positive to the negative terminal that is from bottom to top that is why this arrow okay now let's try to solve and find id so we take kvl in this loop minus 12 from here 5 into i1 and 0 and from here, I1 is 2.4 ampere. Similarly, from the right loop, 0 minus, uh, sorry, uh, minus 11, and for I2 is equal to 0, and therefore I2 is 2.75. Now we have found the two currents, I1 and I2. What is the relation with ID? Now you can see these two currents are coming from top to bottom, but our ID is going from bottom to top. That means the summation of the two will have the magnitude of ID, but the direction is opposite. So we can write that ID is equal to minus I1 plus I2. And putting the value, we get ID to be minus 5.15. Now our condition, that for forward bias, we have assumed this to be forward bias, ID has to be positive. Whereas ID is negative in this case, that means there is a contradiction. And so we'll say that this assumption is not valid. So we go for the next assumption. Okay, so we had done one uh, or uh, uh, short circuit case. Now we'll go for zero or diode off or reverse bias condition. So diode is off or reverse bias. So reverse bias, we open the circuit. And here also we have to enforce the conditions. And that is the first one. Since this is open, the current has to be zero. So current through diode is enforced to be zero. What about the voltage? We have to calculate this voltage. And now since there is no loop here, just one loop, so we'll use uh, the uh, nodal analysis, current entering, 
is equal to current leaving by kcl at node v1 both currents i1 and i2 entering and leaving current is zero in terms of voltage now we can write this one zero minus v1 plus 12 because the current from 12 is also going in the same direction that is why we write it with the plus sign and divided by resistance similarly here 0 minus v1 and this current is also adding to i2 therefore we write we add 11 divided by 4 the simplest way to solve is that we multiply by the uh, LCM. So LCM is 20. So when we multiply by 20, 5, 5 cancels. So there will be 4 at the numerator in this case. And we have to multiply by 5 in the of the numerator in the second case. And solving, we find 9 VA to be 103. Therefore, V1, sorry, V1 is 11.44 volt. So we have found this voltage. Now, what is the relation between V1 and Vd? You can see this one is going from ground up. So that means it is positive at the top and negative at the bottom. Our Vd is shown like this from here. Sign is negative at the top and positive at the bottom. That means Vd is opposite of V1. So we can write that Vd is equal to minus V1 or it is minus 11.44. Now let's see the condition. The condition for reverse bias was that Vd has to be less than zero. And you can see that our Vd is also less than zero or negative. So assumption two is correct. And if assumption two is correct, that means the diode is reverse bias condition. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please wait and watch for my next video, next two, three video on the topic. So your concept gets absolutely clear. Inshallah. Thank you.